run right past you to the right, right there he didn't have anything. You are watching footage recorded earlier this month by Glenn Spencer, the president of the American Border Patrol. Uh, men were caught on Spencer's ranch smuggling into our country four bags of marijuana. Let's discuss that and other topics pertaining to the border by welcoming in the aforementioned Glenn Spencer. As I mentioned, he's president of the Arizona Border Patrol, Skyping in tonight from his ranch that is right there on the border with Mexico. Uh, you heard me say before the break that we are going to welcome Tom Tancredo. We hope to have him. A couple of technical bugs, but we're trying to work that out given the vagaries of live television. Glenn, it's good to have you back on Newsmax Prime. Welcome to the program. Well, I am honored to be on your important news program. Thank you, sir. And speaking of importance, you know, you and I don't joke about the border. And yet Bill Clinton was out today in New Jersey on the stump for Hillary Clinton, and he decides to go after Donald Trump and immigration policy. I guess he was trying to make a joke or at least make a mockery of the notion of having border security. Let's listen and watch. You can build a wall across our border with Mexico. Then we could create giant sea walls along the Atlantic and Pacific. You're laughing, but just stay with me. We could send the whole U.S. Navy to the Gulf Coast and keep anybody from getting in there. We could put every airplane the Air Force has got in the air and stop planes from landing. You still couldn't keep out the social media. Uh, so there is Clinton. Oh, that's really funny stuff, eh, Glenn? Well, I don't know where to begin. Yeah, in the last couple of months, Clinton told the people of Mexico, I apologize uh, for your drug war because what happened is our Navy stopped you in the, at the sea, in the sea, and you had to come inland and you had to come to places that are hard to cross, all right? So now he's telling us our, na our Navy can't do it and he told the Mexicans our Navy did do it. Well, uh, what we know is the, the guys on the left view this as a recruiting tool. They want to bring in more voters. Let's bring in our first caller for this segment from an area I know well. Out in Black Canyon City, Arizona, Drew is on the line. Drew, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Hello, Drew. This is Gerald from Black Canyon City. Gerald, I apologize, but I'm glad to have you, Gerald. And what's no on problem. your mind tonight? Go right ahead, sir. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I moved here in 72, and this, you know, it's, it's always been a problem, always been a problem, never been taken care of. I believe Clinton is just like Obama, just trying to separate the country, stir up trouble. Uh, Clinton was never liked by the military. I've talked to several military while he was in office, and they said he didn't care for the military at all. So it's just an ongoing thing. They want to separate the country. They want to cause problems, cause riots, and, you know, it's terrible. Well, listen, I very much appreciate your take on this, Gerald, and I apologize for getting your name wrong. Something else I want to bring into this conversation, gentlemen. Former Mexican President Vicente Fox showed up on CNN, and he basically was campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Now get this, urging all Mexicans in America to support the Democrat Party. Where do you see this? We all leaders outside of the United States don't go along with him. But that's why Hillary Clinton will be the next president of the United States, because she is a loving, tender mother with citizens. She has that soft, compassionate side, but she also is an iron lady. She can be firm when it is needed. Uh, so there is Vicente Fox basically endorsing Hillary Clinton. And, and when you take a look at the numbers from the Pew Research Center, you know, it's very interesting to see what's going on in terms of applications for citizenship. There was a spike in 2012. And right now, heading into this election, there's been a 13 percent increase. And uh, given the proclivity of states like California to get illegals registered, I guess Vicente Fox's endorsement means something. Or does it, Glenn Spencer? You know, this might backfire on them. Uh, uh, Americans of Mexican descent, they want to go to work, too. They don't want to be on the dole. 
They want a job. They want to be productive. You know, Trump is promising that. And we're seeing it in the Hispanic community where his approval is increasing. And uh, we want to increase your comments as you're lining up to talk with us at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Let's go out to Oregon, where Doug is on the line. Hi, Doug. Hi. Uh, I lived in San Diego for four years in the, in the 60s, and there were a few people coming over, but not much. I think we need to just figure out a way to legalize all of them are here, and then shut down, keep the border as close as you can. Don't make it advantageous for people to sneak over and bring dope over and all that stuff. Yeah, see, here's the flaw in the argument, Doug, and I appreciate what you saw in San Diego. You see, we tried that once before with Simpson Mazzoli. In fact, the reason Ronald Reagan signed that legislation was because it had an enforcement component to end all this. But guess what? Administrations of both parties never enforce the law, and now you've got millions of people here who will eat up trillions of dollars, and that's the problem with the notion of, hey, let this new crowd come in and have citizenship, and then we'll deal with it. Already, it's unsustainable economically. Uh, Glenn, let me turn to you for a comment uh, based on what Doug had to say. Uh, you're absolutely right, J.D., and, uh, you know, Donald Trump says he's going to build a wall. What Donald Trump's really saying is he's going to seal that border, and we're encouraging him to do that. Uh, I've been working on this thing down on the border. I'm looking into Mexico right now for 14 years, and I hope uh, that Donald and, you know, they were supposed to come down and see me some time ago, and, and we have a good relationship with some of the people on his staff. There's a way to prove that the border is secure. And I think in his campaign, Donald has to work out a way to show the American people as a businessman, as a bottom line, you know, he knows the bottom line. He's going to tell the American people, I will secure the border, and this is how I will account for it. And he does need to pay a visit, or somebody from his campaign does need to get down and see you. Absolutely. We're very pleased via Skype to welcome in my old colleague from Capitol Hill, former Colorado Congressman Tom Tancredo, who ran for the Republican nomination in 2008, and uh, now is no longer a Republican, but is still guts up on border security. So, Tom, welcome back to Newsmax Prime. Let me ask you, sir. Uh, just get with you politically for a second. You are all in for Cruz. Tom, have you made the switch now to Donald Trump? Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, you, you know, it, people say um, you either, uh, they say about me, I, I know they said it about you too, J.D., when you were running, you either love him or you hate him. I, I really don't have any of the, either of those two emotions. I just want to beat Hillary Clinton. I, I don't, whether, I don't love Donald Trump. I don't hate Donald Trump. I definitely want Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States, as opposed to what we are looking at as the alternative. Well, let's talk about the situation we're looking at on the border. And Glenn Spencer literally can look out his front door and see the border. But Tom, you and I fought this battle for a long time. And quite frankly, you got started before I did. But then I heard from good folks like Glenn Spencer, and I went down to see for myself. Do you believe, are you satisfied that Trump is sincere and that he will secure the border, Tom Tancredo, that he will build the wall? No, I am not sure of that at all. I, I hope it with all of my heart. I want to believe it with all of my heart. He has said things in the last few weeks that make me wonder about whether or not he is committed to it. He has established, I understand today, some sort of task force that is designed to look at all of the immigration issues, including the, the uh, potential for Muslim, uh, some sort of uh, hiatus on Muslim immigration, but all other immigration issues, including, of course, um, the amnesty thing. Well, let and me let me turn back. Let me turn back to uh, uh, to my to my good friend Glenn Spencer. Glenn, you heard Tom. And Tom is taking a wait and see attitude. He's a little worried about Donald Trump. I just got to ask you in the minute that remains in this segment, do you believe with all your heart that Trump is going to build that wall and Trump is going to secure the border and not issue any type of amnesty? I'm on Tom's side. Uh, as uh, my parents were born in Missouri, and their motto is, show me. 
I think he must, before the election, before the Republican uh, Assembly, he has to say exactly how he is going to measure success. All right. Well, uh, it, it sounds somewhat Reagan-esque, gentlemen. Trust but verify. That's it. So, so that, that's the advice to the Republican nominee. Gentlemen, I want to verify the fact that we want you to stay right where you are because we've got uh, some more time to spend talking about these important issues. And more calls are coming in at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. Callers from California, heck, callers from coast to coast, lined up and ready to talk to us. And we'll talk to you right after this. I don't think I toned it down. I want to have strong immigration. I want to have strong borders. Some people agree with me and some people don't. But for the most part, they agree. We have to have strong borders or we don't have a country. So, no, I don't think I toned it down. Donald Trump earlier today on ABC's Good Morning America telling George Stephanopoulos that he will not tone down his message on illegal immigration. Now, if you have a message to give directly to us, we invite you to call in at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. We are rejoined by Glenn Spencer, president of the American Border Patrol, and former Colorado Congressman Tom Tancredo. And gentlemen, we're going to go straight back to the phones from Merced, California. Valentine is on the line. Welcome to Newsmax Prime, Valentine. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. I'm a Mexican-American. I have uh, followed these political um, happening this year from the very beginning, which has been quite a few months already. I've seen Donald Trump grow to almost being our next leader. but. As a Mexican-American in presidents that I know of, they always say something, but they never go through it. I try to... So, so what I'm American wondering, Valentine, you, you say you hear presidents say something and they're not going to do it. Valentine, do you believe that Donald Trump will secure the border and deal with illegal immigration? When he says something that he'll have Mexico pay for it is something that probably related that he would not really build the wall. Maybe maybe he'll just bring in his company and hire people in Mexico instead. Well, there, there are a couple of ways to do that, and I appreciate your perspective, Valentine. I'm going to uh, talk to our panel about this, but let's just understand. Uh, we've had public works projects in the past. There would be no greater project. It's not really Trump development coming in, but somebody building that wall from coast to coast. Uh, that's real money along those uh, the, the, that border there, and it, it can be done. The notion of a can-do thing, and when it comes to Mexico paying for it, Tom Tancredo, couldn't, uh, couldn't the remunerations going back to Mexico, all the money being wired there from the illegal labor force, couldn't that basically be taken and used to build the wall? Absolutely. Well, you can certainly tax it. I, I actually proposed that uh, quite a few years ago. Because at that point, we were, we were sending $25 billion to Mexico, but that's just to Mexico. $150 billion every year going out of the United States as remittances. That is, people making the money here, sending it someplace else in the, in the, in the world. We could tax that, and that's a, a way to build the wall. You remember, you know, please understand, you know, the caller, Valentine, it, it's not just Mexico that, has, that we have a problem with. 40% of the people in this country who are here illegally came legally as a result of visas, and they overstay. It's not just an issue of trying to stop immigration from Mexico from illegal aliens. Illegal aliens are a problem beyond, far beyond Mexico. And, and so please understand, I mean, I hate it when, we, when the conversation always revolves around 
back to Mexico. It's only part of the problem. Well, understood, understood, but that becomes the point of entry, and you're quite right. We have a lot of people who have overstayed visas. We've had a lot of people who have come in the country across that border from Mexico who aren't necessarily Mexican. Glenn That's Spencer, right. you've had oh, some firsthand, yeah. uh, you've had some firsthand interaction with non-Mexicans crossing that southern border right there close to your ranch, have you not? OTMs. Yeah, OTMs. Uh, we, a week ago, we had, uh, they apprehended four drug smugglers right on my property while I was there, okay? Uh, and one of them gave me a uh, disrespectful symbol. Uh, but the point is this, Tom, you're right, but it's very difficult to solve the, the visa problem. It is very simple. Let's go for the low-hanging fruit. Let's seal the border. Let's put uh, a metric out there that Trump must meet. Remember, 10 years ago, a little nine years ago, Senator Elizabeth Dole, who should have been the first female president, said the reason we don't have success on the border is the lack of a metric. She said that on the floor of the Senate just before they defeated the amnesty bill. And of she course, Glenn, you have established uh, some 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 devices to provide that metric. And we want to bring you back to talk about that in the days ahead. But one of the metrics we have is to make sure we get comments from people calling in from across the country. Let's go to a caller from Tucson, Arizona. Lee is on the line. Lee, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Hi, J.D. I just had to call and weigh in on the border problem there. Go right ahead. Uh, well, you know, I... I have lived in Tucson for 55 years, and I'm telling you that if I took someone out that says, oh, we don't need an AR-15 with 30-round clips, come spend a day with me out there, and they're going to be down to the local gun shop, and they're going to buy an AR-15 with two 30-round clips. Well, you know, Glenn Spencer, you've seen this stuff, and Lee is talking about what he's seen in Tucson and when he travels down to the border. Glenn Spencer, you every day are dealing with this. You had the video of the marijuana smugglers. Let me ask you this, Glenn. Do you fear for your personal safety there where you're located on the border? No, because they could have killed me a long time ago with one shot right through the fence into my heart. They haven't done it. But I feel for America. I feel for America. They, and by the way, they may still do that. I feel for America because they don't know what's going on because there aren't Newsmaxes all over the country. Well, there's Newsmax right here and we're coast to coast and we're going to take another call to close out the conversation from the Queen City of the West, although it's in Ohio, Cincinnati. Tim, welcome to the program. Yes, I, I've been trying to get in and uh, uh, what Trump's saying about the border, it has to be started somewhere if he can't complete at least he's brought up and talked about it with uh with uh doing something about it you have to define the line from the united states and mexico everybody wants to be secured you can't leave an open door yeah, you can't, you can't leave uh, an open door or your windows and gate unlocked, Tim. That's the case. Tom Tancredo, final 30 seconds to you for your uh, thoughts. Well, here, here's the thing, J.D. The, the only reason I was bringing up this new committee that, that Trump proposed is because he's put Rudy Giuliani as the head of it, apparently. Now, I know Rudy. You know him. He's a great guy, very affable. I like him a lot. But he was the mayor of the biggest sanctuary city in the United States. I just don't know where this goes. I, I want to see other proof. Yeah, yeah bottom been, line is, said, is, 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 as cap as capable as Giuliani is, you know, you bring up the right point about sanctuary cities. Seems to me, instead of a commission on Muslims exclusively, we just have a moratorium on immigration and get a handle on things. And, and gentlemen, listen, unfortunately, I got a moratorium on continuing the conversation. I hope you both will come back and be with me again real soon. Glenn Spencer on the border and Tom Tancredo tonight from Colorado. Now, it's time for the way you see it, your comments via social media. We hear first from Diana, uh, Deanna, who has a little constructive criticism for me. She writes, J.D., please stop using segues in your evening shows. They are like puns. Makes one groan. Really getting old. Not as cute as you might think. Otherwise, your show is interesting and informative. Just stop the segues, please. 
<clears throat> Sorry for making you groan, Deanna, especially since we're both grown-ups. Oh, that's more of a pun than a segue. Seriously, I appreciate the constructive criticism. Hope you'll keep watching. A lot of people have written in about Paul Ryan and Donald Trump. Leon wrote this. Who promoted Private Ryan? Paul Ryan is a disgrace to any real representative of the people and should be replaced by November. And it's worth noting, Leon, he has a serious challenge. You have the challenge of the weekend ahead. We'll be looking for you Monday in the interim quickly to show you how you can get in touch with me. We've got the internet, we've got Twitter, and of course, we've got the phones. Stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.